Hi, welcome again, or welcome for the first time. Welcome to today's vlog, where we will be talking shortly about interval training. You have probably already heard a lot about interval training. You've heard perhaps that it burns more calories in a shorter time, that it raises the epoch effect, the amount of calories you burn after exercise. So many claims get thrown around, so let's look a little bit more into what is perhaps a little bit of hype, what can you really count on, or what is like the do's and the don'ts of HIIT training. If you're hearing the word HIIT training for the first time, what is HIIT training? Well, it stands for High Intensity Interval Training. So shorten that up and that is now coined HIIT training. High intensity means getting the intensity, your heart rate or your working effort up to a place for some people, it's about 80% of the maximum heart rate that you can achieve. Some say 85, but roughly in that area. So a place where you'll have a difficulty speaking short sentences, or perhaps you're even getting up to the level where you can only speak single words. That is high intensity interval training. So that brings us to the first uh, fallacy or like falsehood of interval training. You'll hear it a lot. You'll hear it in mag or you'll read it in magazines. You'll hear it in podcasts. You'll experience it at a club and they'll say, hey, we do interval training. But then it's really about being picky. Well, do your heart rate get up to that very high threshold? Then if that's the case, check you've hit high intensity. Now comes the second thing. Are you doing this in an interval based format? So do you push the heart rate up to 80, 85, 90% of your maximum, and then let it drop continuously? You have an active break, you push it back up, you have another active break, and you do X amount of rounds. Because that's the second thing about HIIT training. A lot of places or a lot of misconceptions are that, well, as long as you just keep the heart rate up high and it just has small fluctuations, that's interval training, but it's not. It's really that big difference between an intense bout of action, movement, training with an active recovery. So make sure you have those really big changes in heart rate because that is what is gonna strengthen your heart muscle. So interval-based format, it could be, and we're gonna be looking at this next week with a little bit more active or detailed video, the four times four interval. So this was a study done in Norway, four minutes of intense exercise, three minutes of recovery. Do that four rounds and then recover. And what they found plus is one of the general uh, ideas and like proven things of interval training is that it creates a really nice uh, adaptation or the training results as a normal cardiovascular workout, but it does it in a shorter time. So some places it will say it, it has achieved the same or better results in one third of the time half the time, 25% of the time, but at least it's the same result as moderate intensity training or steady state training or better results, but all of it in a shorter time. So does this mean that HIIT training is for everyone? No, it does not. HIIT training should be applied to you for a specific goal. So it could be you want to improve your VO2 max, so your cardiovascular level, or you want to improve your cardiovascular health, then HIIT training could be a good idea. If you're looking to become a marathon runner, well, perhaps you at least, that's not the only thing you should be doing with HIIT training. Perhaps you put it into your training 
and do some intervals that are adapted to your goal. But make sure that this is not me saying that everyone should only be doing HIIT training because that's not the case. It's individual. What type of intervals, um, the intensity and the work to rest ratio, well, that is up to you to find out with a trainer, coach, uh, through studying or similar. But I'm just here to let you know like the main thing of HIIT training and why we like praise it so much in the industry is that it's better or superior results in a shorter time frame. Make your cardiovascular fitness or health better. And it's a great way to get endorphins running. But again, it is intense. It is tough. So if you feel that you're not the type that really wants to push to you feel almost out of breath, well, perhaps HIIT training is not for you. But I'm just here to say different types of intervals. You can try it, find an interval, make sure if you have any medical conditions, connect with the doctor uh, to get an approval, but try to incorporate it like once or twice per week. and Hopefully you will see your results skyrocket. And if that's not the case, well, perhaps if you're measuring heart rate using a smart belt from Activio, uh, a normal belt from Polar, Garmin watch, Apple watch, make sure that the intensity is high enough. You want to go to a level where you have a really hard time speaking short sentences or even only single words. That is high intensity. Anything else where you can chat with a neighbor, even though your watch, your phone, something similar says that your heart rate is up, well, perhaps it's not high enough. So this is Kenneth from Activio uh, and from Performance Lab Nordic telling you to look into high intensity training, HIIT training, bigger bang for the buck in a shorter time and stay tuned for next week where we will be looking more into the four times four interval, how you can do it, how you can apply it and hopefully get you started on using interval training. Until then, stay happy, healthy and keep moving. Bye.